This is the 12 volts 10 amps LED power supply I received recently from Sunsky online. I see that they sell really good quality products. And as you can see, this power supply also looks of very high quality. The terminals from the power supply are indicated here to make the connection simpler. The body of the power supply is quite sturdy and as you can see the bottom and the left side and the back side of this power supply are very thick. Probably these are for the heat sinks. And the terminals here are having screws with indications so that uh, we can just put the wire inside the terminal and screw it up tight. Here as you can see there is a potentiometer which is used to adjust the output voltage. I'll make sure this is adjusted to 12 volts as this power supply will be powering few lights and other devices which will be working at 12 volts. Here there is also an indicator to adjust the input voltage to 110 and 220 volts. And there is a switch inside this case which can be used to adjust this voltage. You can use a small screwdriver like this just to push it to 110 or 220 volt selection. In India the main supply is 220 volts so I will just let it be in the 220 volt selection itself. There is also a warranty sticker here and I guess if it's broken it's void. Anyways we will just leave it for now. And as you can see here, this product meets ISO 9001 standards as well. First let's connect this AC cord to the power supply and let's test it how it works. When switched on, it worked as expected and the LED started glowing indicating that there was power supply coming in. But the only problem I observed when the earth connection was not given is the body of the power supply was receiving main supply. As you can see, when I connect a tester to the body of the power supply, the neon bulb inside the tester started glowing, indicating that there is supply all over the body. If I touch the body of the power supply, then I might get a bad shock. So earthing of the power supply is compulsory. Next we will open up this top part of the case of the power supply to explore it more. And as I guess, the quality of the components inside the power supply is also very good. And this is the switch I was talking about to change the input voltage from 110 to 220 volts. I will set it to 220 volts just to be safe. This is a toroid and you can also see there are a few big 250 volts capacitors here. These two probably these are for filtering. Here close to the AC input I see there is a thermistor and this controls the current based on the temperature. There's also a fuse here just to protect and avoid short circuits. While exploring the circuit board, I saw that there was a pin here marked saying fan. This must be for the exhaust fan which is not there for this power supply. And what we're going to do is we have few old exhaust fans here which work on 12 volts. We are going to solder it there just to make it uh, cooler when it's handling high power devices. There are two pins here, one is for positive and one is for negative. We are going to remove this circuit board out and then we'll solder the fan here and then we'll put it back. Once soldering is done, I fix the PCB back into place and close the top metal casing. Next I stuck this fan just above the part of the metal casing where the heating components are more. 
here there are two transistors side by side so I fix the fan over there. Before sticking the fan I would connect main supply to the input of this power supply and test that the fan is working normally. I use some hot glue to stick the fan onto the case. Next I have connected three wires, one to the live, one to neutral and one to ground. These will be going to the AC supply on my workbench. Next I have fixed the power supply under my workbench using two screws on either side. I made sure that the fan comes directly underneath. I have attached two more wires to the output of this power supply. These 12 volts power supply wires will be connected directly to the control board on my workbench. I have done all the wiring and this is how it looks. The mains input of the power supply is connected directly through this switch port from the second switch. If I switch this on, the power supply will be on and when I switch it off, the power supply will be off. The output 12 volts wire of the power supply is connected to the switch port here. This will be powering the lights, the soldering iron, the amplifier board which is connected to the speakers directly. I leave the links to the videos of the lights, the soldering iron and the speakers in the description. As you can see all the devices are working as expected. And if I switch this off, the power supply will be off. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, you might like some of my other videos too. Please check them out at Electronics Made Easy Khadar. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.